My name is Stefan Feldster. Uh, I'm the head of a small think tank called the Reform Institute in Stockholm, Sweden. Mm, we develop um, agendas for reform based on things that work somewhere in the world, mm -hmm. uh, including healthcare reform, and we've done quite a bit of work on how to promote uh, the use of digital technology in healthcare and also schools and, and other places. Mm. Why specifically digital? Why, why M Health? What, what, what drew you to that area? Uh, because m many of the, the problems that we've identified in healthcare. Uh, and where we for decades have propagated uh, other kinds of organizational or legal reforms, uh, it turns out that there's a digi digital shortcut. Um, for example, um, complex regulation can often, with a digital shortcut, be made simple for the user. Um, and, and that's why introducing the right kind of digital technology uh, it is sort of a shortcut to getting organizations to work, but it, it won't work automatically. Even in healthcare, mm, there are digital technologies that create more problems than they solve. Yeah, mm. yeah. Can you give us some <coughs> examples of some of the projects that you've worked on, mm. particularly in the healthcare sector? Um, yeah, so, so we're thinking a lot about um, the next step mm -hmm. with artificial intelligence mm -hmm. in healthcare. But very soon people are going to have on their iPhone a digital doctor that they'll consult. Mm, and if the public or the general healthcare system isn't in tune with this, then what will happen is that the digital doctor will very quickly tell the patient that, oh, you, you probably have to go and see a real doctor. Mm -hmm. So this may actually drive demand and increase costs for, for the public mm -hmm. uh, healthcare system. Th that's Which is not prepared that for, no, that's not yeah. prepared for, and that's that's the worst scenario. The better scenario would be if a person who uses a digital doctor in his uh, smartphone uh, simply can transfer the diagnosis and information to his or her healthcare center, and the personnel there can then decide well yeah, you should come in or you should go to a specialist directly. And if you do come in, they already have much of the description of the symptoms mm -hmm. and you can start talking about treatment right away. From mm -hmm. a, yeah, from a yeah. more advanced mm -hmm. stage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, for, for lay people, what would a digital doctor be able to do? I mean, is it mm -hmm. purely diagnosis? Do you ask it questions? Does it answer your questions? How, what, what, what are you actually talking about when you say mm -hmm. digital doctor? So the, the engine is um, uh, 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 somebody like a person mm -hmm. that engages in a conversation mm -hmm. that how are you feeling and mm -hmm. oh, I see yeah, you have a headache yeah. uh, have you uh, hit your head recently mm -hmm. have you been in so the it sun asks and you questions and yeah, you get yeah. answers mm -hmm. to those questions okay. but, but the new thing is uh, and the reason we believe in this so much is that uh, previously you had to some program every step in these mm -hmm. expert systems now they're uh, self-learning right. and they, they can follow conversations between a patient and a real doctor okay. and learn from those and typically after a few months they'll be able to to give the right yeah, answers so the most real of the time and sometimes even better than the real yeah, doctor yeah. because they they can learn from all conversations yeah. at the same time yeah. Um, now, now in, in the session earlier, <coughs> you, you, you highlighted some criteria for upscaling these kinds of projects to, to wider, wide, wider scale implementation. <coughs> Could you go into a little bit detail yeah. on, on those criteria? So, unfortunately, there are lots and lots of uh, healthcare apps and e health mm -hmm. solutions uh, developed now, and most of them are not used, mm -hmm. even though they, they provide some benefit over mm -hmm. how things were, were done previously but not enough of a benefit. So I, I've tried to identify four criteria for M health applications that makes them viral, that mm -hmm. makes them spread uh, on their own account mm -hmm. without any subsidies or, or regulations or so on. And among them are that uh, it should be absolutely free for, mm -hmm. for the end user no fees, no complicated some registration procedures, it should be reliable, it shouldn't require a person who doesn't have a smartphone to buy a smartphone. Mm -hmm. But then also uh, that the, 
the healthcare organizations, a hospital or a district that invests in this uh, M Health app, has to be able to recoup its own costs. Uh, if if it has costs and the benefits arise elsewhere, uh, then it will just be very very difficult mm -hmm. to get these applications to spread mm -hmm. be because most organizations don't have that kind of extra reserves. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, so, and, and then the, there's some other criteria. Mm. But um, so, so my idea is to to uh, perhaps develop a fewer M Health applications, mm. but try to identify at an early stage which c have the capacity to be viral in mm. the sense, and to invest more in those. And if one does that, uh, it will also be easier to engage um, the private market. There's now quite a lot of uh, what they call impact investment capital mm -hmm. savers that are, are prepared to make a risky investment in something that may have a mm -hmm. positive social impact. Yeah. And, and um, they are often prepared to invest in also M Health applications if there's a chance that, that these can be t turn into something really big, mm -hmm. that they can become viral mm -hmm. and spread. Mm -hmm. Even if, <coughs> I mean, mm. now I speak from a completely technology mm. ignorant person. So when you talk about viral, I mean, and, and about it, mm. it just spreading by itself and being free and mm. accessible to people, there's still data costs. So yeah, you're yeah, still going to yeah, be able to mm, have internet mm, connectivity, and you've got to pay for your data, and you've got to be able to download uh, the yeah, app and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So it's never completely free, right? Am I understanding that, uh, that correctly? Uh, yeah, that, that's correctly. Yeah. But, but our starting point is that it's, so many you're not people... not for the app. Yeah, so, so many people have, uh, for other reasons, uh, buy a mobile telephone. Right. Um, but I think it's important, uh, at least in low-income countries, that these things should work even with um, uh, just a mobile phone, not yeah, a smartphone. Right, mm -hmm. right, okay. uh, so so a, a person with a mobile phone would then have no extra costs right, using, okay, using okay. this app. Okay. But there will, of course, be costs for whoever operates mm -hmm. uh, the, the database behind the app and, mm -hmm. and so on. But those costs could sometimes be sort of central in the government or an NGO mm -hmm. could finance that with the help of impact investment so that the, the local, say, primary uh, care facility or, or hospital doesn't actually bear that cost. Right, uh, right, right. Because mm -hmm. particularly in our setting, wouldn't have the money to bear that yeah, kind of cost. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, uh, I think in, man, in many of these discussions uh, there are great ideas and, and uh, interesting visions. But it's always interesting to know <coughs> so what are the roadblocks. I mean, uh, if you would pick the three things that would be um, uh, most difficult to, uh, to deal with. <laughs> yeah, so the, I, I think at this stage, for the applications that really have potential, financing is not a major roadblock. There is enough of sort of private financing or NGOs and so on that are prepared to invest in this. Mm. One, one major roadblock though is who is going to develop this. And in, in my experience, if a government agency tries to do this, in-house or control this process very much, uh, then it may take a very long time and, or, and it may fail completely because um, often a government agency will, will have to um, satisfy quite a lot of interest groups and, and, and in the end that may mean that that this app doesn't do anything mm. uh, properly. Mm. So, so there are very large IT investment failures in particular when government agencies have been too uh, some tight-fisted in, in the process. Mm. But, but it's not just government agencies, it's also uh, healthcare personnel can sometimes be quite opposed to, to new technologies. Mm. Um, for example, we've seen that, that doctors frequently have, have opposed having patient journals online so that mm. patients can read them because that places greater demands on doctors also to, to be meticulous mm -hmm. in, in what they write. It makes them more mm, controllable in a way. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, so th and, and that uh, also is easier to overcome if development is, is not actually 
in-house or within the healthcare organization, but a separate organization can develop this uh, a, a, and, and then get paid if it works according to predefined criteria. Mm. But with collaboration between the different, even if, if the government's mm. not controlling it, mm. they must be part of the process. And, oh, oh yeah, correctly. absolutely. Yeah. But, but ideally, and the way impact investing often works, that ideally a government a health service would predefine a number of criteria and, and then sign a contract where it says if this app works according to these criteria then we also pay the investors. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work then they don't get paid. I mean we're in Africa now <coughs> and sometimes it's easy or easier uh, to discuss things like this in a, in a European or Swedish context. Uh, how universal would an app like this be uh, uh, to be used in, in a number of countries? Mm -hmm. I, th I think in, in many apps there can be a, a common engine. For example, in an um, artificial in intelligence the digital doctor, th the engine would be the same and, and probably already exists. Uh, but then you have to train this digital doctor in understanding languages, the local dialects, and being in tune with uh, whatever diseases and, and so on are, are common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, an, an, that's an important investment also. And an investment that, that uh, the market or some for-profit business won't do usually because there's, there's no... Uh, um, there's no business in that, in particular in a low-income country. Mm. Yeah.